Hey guys, Dr. Ben here, F8 Well Centers. Welcome to Thyroid Secrets Revealed. I am so excited that you are joining in on this webinar. This is something that I am so passionate about because let, let's get to the let's get to the ground floor here. So many people are confused, are mis, uh, misdiagnosed. They're not being treated appropriately. Thyroid is going to be the number one thing that we see where patients are left in the dark. And I want to pull all of these uh, all of these curtains away and show you exactly what is going on, why your body is not working like it's supposed to, why it doesn't matter whether you go on thyroid hormone, whether you go on medication, whatever you do, it is not making you feel better because that's what we hear all the time. I have patients, they come in, and they say, I've been to my PCP, I've been my endocrinologist, I've been to my nurse practitioner, everybody, and they adjust my hormones up, they adjust them down, and I never feel better. And that's probably you sitting out there right now thinking, okay, can I ever feel good? Can I actually feel good? And there's a couple things I want you to be thinking about as you go through this webinar today. I want you to think about uh, one question. The first question is going to be why. Why am I having these symptoms? Why is my body doing this? If you have Hashimoto's and it's an autoimmune disease, why is my body attacking its own tissue? If you're under converting, why do you have enough T4 but not enough T3? All of these things you gotta be asking why, why, why? And then the second question that you need to be asking is who? So many people wanna ask, what do I do? Uh, how do I fix this? What do I take? But that's the wrong question as well. You need to ask ask, uh, who is going to help me through this process? And right now, I'm part of that who. I'm going to be part of that who that is telling you, this is what you need to be doing next. You need to be looking at this marker. You need to be looking at this system. You need to be looking at these numbers, even though the lab says these numbers are okay, these numbers are not okay, and you need to be in this range. So that's what I'm going to teach you guys today. Hopefully, I can inspire you to take massive action and to start changing your diet or to take some supplements or to uh, call in and, and work with us and we'll take you by the hand, but to do something, take massive action and we can see amazing, amazing results. So first of all, who am I? Dr. Ben Galliard. Uh, and here are actually my two books that I've written, Rebuild Your Brain, uh, Brain Stop the Damage, Start the Repair, and then Blood Sugar Doesn't Lie are uh, two of the books I've written. You can grab those on, on Amazon. I've been in practice. I graduated in 2001. For some of you, that is longer than you've been alive, but I have been doing this way back when functional medicine was just getting going. I trained with some of the original founders in functional medicine space. I have seen so many different paths and different things. People came out with genetic testing and stool testing and look, looking at Dutch testing and hormones and all of these different things. And I've been able to fine tune and take the best of the best over the last 25 years and fine tune it into exactly this information that I'm going to be getting to you tonight and showing you guys that, you know what? There are things that are causing your issues and things that you can do to correct those. And, uh, and this is my passion. How did I get down this path? Well, the first thought that I ever had with autoimmune was when my mom was diagnosed with MS. I was a junior in high school. She collapsed at one of my football games. Everybody's like, oh my gosh, what's going on? And I go, I don't know. I was playing football. I didn't even see it. And so they took her to a neurologist. They took her to all these doctors and they ended up saying, you know what? You've got MS. She was a school teacher, got teacher of the year award, was just an amazing, amazing lady and gave it her all. And it, that was part of the problem was that she burned herself out and her body started attacking its own tissue. She developed MS. She had to go on disability. She went on all the drugs back in the nineties, uh, ended up uh, getting a cane, using a wheelchair in this downward spiral. We thought like the doctor said, that's going to be it. She's going to she's gonna probably die from this, and that will be the rest of her life. Uh, my dad was retiring in the next couple of years. He thought he was going to have to build a house with wider hallways and all these things. Fortunately, when he did retire, they moved to this small town in the middle of nowhere in Missouri and found a doctor that was doing this type of work even before it was called functional medicine, getting to the underlying root cause even before 
there was a uh, leaky gut thought or any of these other things. And he worked through system by system by system to the point where she was able to reverse her MS. Legit. This is, this is true. She's now 80 years old and uh, she does granny boot camp. She takes my kids fishing. She got off all the drugs. She gave away her wheelchair, gave away her cane. She no longer has placking. Her last MRI was like 20 years ago. No longer has placking on her MRI. She's not just in remission. She has healed from MS. So if some of you are sitting out there like, no way, that's not possible. I'm like, I'll, I'll let you get on the phone. She'd talk to you today if, if she could. And here's the deal. We have seen this reproduced over and over with patients with other autoimmune conditions, with other digestive issues, with all types of different health challenges. And how does that happen? Think about this. If you have an autoimmune disease, if you have a thyroid issue, if you have a gut issue, was there something or some things that predisposed you for that? Was it a death, a divorce, a trauma? Was it a virus? Was it uh, going through COVID or COVID shots? Or was it uh, having having to, um, to deal with major stressors at work or some type of pregnancy or whatever, if things can drive your inflammation and your autoimmune and your health, health issue, don't you think that if you reverse those, if you pull those back, you can start seeing this beautiful, beautiful response where you get to the place of, wow, I'm not attacking myself anymore. And now my body's actually able to start healing. And that's what she was able to do. Her body started healing that myelin sheath and started healing because there wasn't this insult, insult, insult over and over. So she was able to start healing that placking and start healing those underlying imbalances. And that's what I want to want to inspire you today to take action, to figure out the whys. Why is your body attacking its own tissue? Why does your body have inflammation? Why, why, why? And that's what we're going to be getting today. So I want you to get out a piece of paper, pencil, pen, um, your uh, iPad and your, your iPen and all, whatever it is, write this stuff down. I'm going to be giving you so much information in a short amount of time. You've got to hit it hard. And as we get through this, I'm going to give you guys an opportunity to work with myself or one of my F8 team members, one of my F8 doctors, our metabolic coordinators, everybody to take you by the hand. We have a huge opportunity and we're able to help so many people get their lives back. I've been doing this for a lot of years. We're able now to help people remotely all over the United States. We can help you get your life back. So I'll be giving you some information as we go through here. So let's think about this, guys. Um, thyroid issues are rampant. We can have a couple different ways. I'm mostly going to be talking today about hypothyroid, but some of it is going to be very similar. Even if you have Graves disease or some hyperthyroid, it's the same thought process. So thyroid issues, the research shows upwards of eight to 15% of people in the United States have thyroid issues. Uh, when you talk about Hashimoto's, you're talking about the number one most common autoimmune condition out there. So it is rampant. There is so many people that are dealing with thyroid issues. Here's the other part of it. Level thyroxin, it's the number one most prescribed medication out there. So this is going to be a medication that is just given out like candy over and over and over. But I've talked to thousands and thousands of patients on our uh, on TikTok. We're we're at four hundred thousand followers on TikTok. On Instagram, a hundred thousand. Facebook, one hundred fifty thousand. I've talked to thousands and thousands of people. Gotten direct messages. Gotten gotten feedback on lives. And so many people say, you know what? I still don't feel good. If that's you, if you still don't feel good. If you have reached out to your doctor, if you've pushed, if you've talked, if you've begged them to do something else and all they want to do is just write you that script for levothyroxine or synthroid or whatever thyroid hormone you're taking, you are missing out. There is way more to your health than taking a hormone. And I'm going to show you that in this webinar today. So um, thyroid is rampant. Hashimoto's is the number one most common autoimmune condition in the United States. Levothyroxine is the number one most common 
medication prescribed in the United States. Coincidence? No. And we're going to get into why that is. So stick with me, guys. And remember, if you've got questions throughout this webinar, uh, go to social media, send, send me a DM, send me an email, get in touch. I want to talk to you guys. I want to share in, in your pain, in what you're dealing with, and talk to you about what you have going on. So uh, here, here's where we go. The thyroid sits in the throat here. It is going to be controlling our metabolism. This is going to be, are we hot enough? Are we cold enough? Are we burning calories? Are we not burning calories? All of these different things that keep us up and going and revved up and able to function like we're supposed to, that's what the thyroid's doing. It's kind of the thermostat in the body. But what happens is we can have it go two ways. The thyroid can go hypo, O meaning low, or it can go hyper meaning high. And so the hypo is a low functioning. Usually the symptoms there are hair falling out, hard time losing weight, cold easily, cry at commercial, some of those, you all got some of those. And then the other side, the hyper, that's going to be more of like Graves disease. And that's going to be heart racing, jittery, losing weight quickly, uh, eyes bugging out of the head, a bunch of things that are just like, you're almost like this little, uh, little hummingbird. So um, you can fall into one of those or even both of those, depending on what you have going on. If you have what's called Hashimoto's, that autoimmune condition, you can actually, if you go into a uh, autoimmune flare, you are going to be revving up and actually uh, going into a hyper state as well. So it can go both ways. So I'm going to teach you guys uh, what can be causing those. Um, we're going to get mostly into hypo today. If you've got more questions on hyper, uh, the vast majority of people have hypothyroid. Some of you have hyper. Send me a DM if you have more questions and want more in-depth information than what, uh, what is going on here. So when we get into the hypo side, there's three main reasons why people get hypothyroid. And I'm going to go through those right now. I'm going to use my whiteboard here. And so um, as, we, as we start thinking about this, um, we've, got, uh, we've got a couple different thoughts on why people get, get hypothyroid. Um, one of the common ones is what we call under conversion. Okay, so under conversion is going to be when you are not converting your T4 to your T3. Okay, so T4 to T3 is going to be uh, what takes place out in the bloodstream. So when, when you go under conversion, you have to convert that T4 to T3. T3 is active usable hormone. And when we think about hormone, that is what you're taking. If you're taking levothyroxine, this is a really important point, guys. Levothyroxine is not a thyroid medication. Synthroid is not a, a thyroid medication. Neither is Cytomel. Neither, neither is Unithroid or Tyrosint or Armor or NP Thyroid or Nature Thyroid. None of those are thyroid medications. And you're like, well, of course it is. I've got a thyroid issue and they give me this medication. So it's a thyroid medication. Thyroid medication would imply that your thyroid is going to be helped by taking this medication. Like a liver medication would support the liver. You know, a uh, anti-inflammatory would support the inflammation process and help calm that down. But a thyroid medication does not support the thyroid. If anything, you actually produce less hormone long-term because you're taking a hormone and then the feedback loop says you have enough hormone, so then you stimulate less and then you, your thyroid produces less hormone. So that's a whole nother, uh, whole nother conversation. But knowing that you are not helping your thyroid is important. You need to know that. And your doctor, if they did not tell you that, hey, I'm gonna give you this hormone replacement, it will do nothing for your thyroid, so you don't expect to get better. Don't expect to improve. Maybe I'll just give you some hormone and you can feel okay, but you're never going to be able to get off of it. You're never going to be able to feel better. So your doctor needed to tell you, this is one of the secrets that is not being told all the time. So you have to know what you are taking. And if you're taking any of these medications that I talked about, you are taking hormone replacement. Levothyroxine, Synthroid, Tyrosine, Unithroid, those are all T4 hormones. 
Cytomel is T3. Armor and NP thyroid are going to be T3 and T4. So they, they are combos and they are going to be uh, basically a T3 and T4 all in one. It's actually from ground up pig thyroid. That's where those come from, their natural version. So uh, why would somebody take a T4 and T3 combo? because they don't have enough T3. They're taking T4 and they have enough T4, but in the body it has to convert. T4 has to convert into T3. T3 is the active usable form. So as T3 becomes activated and T4 converts to that, then it's gonna be able to go to the cells and be able to function and do all of these great things. But if you have lots of T4, you're taking all this level thyroxin, not converting into T3, then you're not going to have the good energy and all that. So you could take all the T4 in the world, but you're not converting. So under conversion is a big part of this, of this problem when we talk about hypothyroid. So it can be whether you're taking levothyroxine or maybe just your thyroid itself is producing enough, but you're not converting. Why would we not be converting? Remember, that's the magic word that I want you to be thinking about this entire talk. Why, why, why? Why are we not converting? 60% of the conversion takes place in the liver. 20% takes place in the gut. So what does that mean? Well, if you're not converting, you've got liver and gut issues. And so we've got to work on that. Um, so just by taking a level thyroxine will not fix the conversion issue. How do you know if you have conversion issue? If your T4 is at the good or upper level and your T3 is at the lower or bad level. It's that easy. So if you're under converting, it may not even be a thyroid issue. This is why I always say it's probably not, not your thyroid. Your thyroid may be producing enough T4, but it's not converting. It's other things, but you're considered hypothyroid. So they give you a thyroid hormone. Okay. So that's one of the main things that we see for why people are hypothyroid is this conversion issue. So we've got to work on the liver. We've got to work on the gut. I'll go through some gut, gut thoughts and, and ways to help the gut here in a few minutes. Number two is going to be a hypopituitary state. So think about this. Stick with me. We're going to get into a little bit of physiology here, guys. So the pituitary tells the thyroid what to do. That's TSH. So many of you guys have had your TSH tested, right? TSH. And your doctor's like, well, your thyroid's good or it's not good. But I, I want to tell you, would you test a pituitary hormone and then make the assumption of whether your thyroid is working like it's supposed to? You know, that's a pretty big assumption. The assumption is that the communication from the pituitary to the thyroid is working like it's supposed to, but that's not always the case. So normally if TSH goes up, we think hypothyroid. If TSH is too low, you're either hyperthyroid or you're taking too much thyroid hormone replacement. And I'm going to call it thyroid hormone replacement because it is not thyroid medication. And it's especially not Hashimoto's medication. I'll get to that in a second. So as we, as we start thinking about hypopituitary, why in the world would the pituitary be depleted and not working well? The pituitary also tells the adrenal glands what to do. So the adrenal glands, stress, gland, stress glands, jobs and cars and kids and COVID and presidents and all these different things, those adrenals are depleted in so many of you, especially you women with kids and jobs and life and all these different things. And so the pituitary, it's basically the jockey whipping the horse to go faster. The jockey ultimately gets tired. And so then we will see a low TSH with a low T3 and a low T4, because normally we would expect the TSH to go up if your T3 and your T4 were low, but if it's not, if that TSH is low, this is usually secondary to a pituitary issue and we're dealing with adrenals and a lot of other issues here. So now we've got to get into, let's one, stop the stress to the adrenals and two, help and support the pituitary so that that communication can work like it's supposed to. So those are the two common ways that we're seeing hypothyroid. And then we'll get to the third one, which is the most common thing that we see. Upwards of 80 plus percent of people that have hypothyroid are dealing with what is called Hashimoto's. Hashimoto's is an autoimmune disease. It was uh, discovered way back in the early 1900s by Dr. 
Hashimoto. And, uh, and the thought was, okay, well, that's weird. The body's attacking its own thyroid tissue. Um, and that's basically what we're looking at in autoimmune disease. And I'll show you what autoimmune is in, in a second here. And there's actually two, again, if you're taking notes at home, write all these down. There's two types of Hashimoto's that you need to be testing for. There's TPO, thyroid peroxidase, and that's going to be attacking the thyroid itself. And then number two is thyroglobulin, and that's attacking the bus that moves around the body. So here's how uh, an autoimmune condition works. So let's say there's a virus uh, in, in your body. So a virus, you get sneezed on, exposed to it somehow. The immune system is going to come in. It's going to create antibodies, and it's going to uh, tag tag that virus for destruction. And then the immune system comes in, natural killer cells, cytotoxic T cells, it's gonna come in and kill that virus or bacteria or whatever it is. So that's normal functioning immune system. What happens is this same process will go to somebody's thyroid, I'm not an artist. So it'll go to somebody's thyroid and tag that thyroid for destruction. And then the immune system comes in and starts destroying it. Okay. Same thing happens on the end of a bone. Rheumatoid arthritis starts destroying the end of that bone. Same thing happened in my mom's MS to her nerves. Same thing happens to your gut with Crohn's disease, with your hair, with alopecia, all of these different things. The immune system comes in and starts destroying its own tissue. And so now we're, now we're kind of in that weird side of like, why in the world would we be attacking our own tissue? And this is the question I, I want you guys to be asking again. Why would we be attacking ourselves. That is really weird. That'd be like you're out in the middle of the ocean and you start shooting holes in the side of your boat. And now you got all these leaks and your boat starts sinking. And you're like, that is not a good game plan. <laughs> I can swim, but I don't want to swim to, uh, uh, you know, a thousand miles to the, to the coast. So uh, what, what is going on here is going to be your body is going haywire. And so remember, what's the question we need to be asking? Why? Why does it do that? Not, here's the question that I get from so many people, and it's the wrong thing to ask. What do I take for my Hashimoto's? How do I fix my Hashimoto's? How do I stop my Hashimoto's? How do I, um, how do I get my Hashimoto's into remission? Um, what, what, do I, uh, what do I eat for Hashimoto's? Those are the wrong questions. Down the road, you can be asking that stuff as you're fine tuning and, and getting a little bit different here. But starting out, your question needs to be why. Why is my body going haywire? And that, that's what I want you to think about as, as I draw this circle here. So this, this circle, and everybody draw this on here. Everybody draw this circle. This is autoimmune. And we're looking at, uh, it, I don't care, it, no matter what you guys are dealing with, autoimmune, Hashimoto's, Graves' disease, you're dealing with MS or lupus or rheumatoid arthritis or celiac disease or Crohn's, psoriasis, psoriatic arthritis, 190 named autoimmune conditions. I don't care what it is. If we know that a lot of people ask this question, I have TPO high, I have thyroglobulin high, and my doctor said the rest of my numbers are fine, do I need to do anything about this? I have ANA high. Do I need to do anything about it? I don't have really symptoms yet of lupus or Sjogren's or whatever. My doctor said to just wait. Well, I, wanna, I want you to think about this. First, why in the world would you be having antibodies if everything was okay? Again, that, that magic question. Why, why would you have antibodies to attack your own tissue if everything is okay? So everything's not okay. We know that. Okay, so... They say to wait because there's no treatment for early stage autoimmune. There's no treatment if you are dealing with ANA high and yet you don't have a lupus diagnosis yet. 
they can't give you hydroxychloroquine. They can't give you methotrexate, which is low dose chemo. They can't give you Humira, which is $10,000 a month. They can't do any of those things yet because they don't have a diagnosis and you're not bad enough. Hashimoto's, here's the, here's the fun part with Hashimoto's, is no one ever treats your Hashimoto's regardless. So if they say, I don't want to do anything and treat you yet because your thyroid numbers are fine, here's why they say that. You guys ready? They say it because the only thing they're going to do to treat your Hashimoto's is give you thyroid hormone replacement. That'd be like if my mom went into the neurologist when she had MS and they said, you know what? I'm going to give you a hormone. You'd be like, but my body is attacking my nerves. Why are you giving me a hormone? Well, uh, we're just going to give you a hormone. Hormones do nothing, whether that's thyroid hormone, testosterone, progesterone, estrogen. Hormones do nothing for your autoimmune. They do not help your autoimmune. So taking thyroid replacement hormone will never help your Hashimoto's. I'm not telling you to stop by any means. That, that do not just go cold turkey and stop taking your, your thyroid medication. But you have to know what it is. You know, and so again, why am I taking this? You're taking that medication because you had a low hormone state, period. You're not taking that medication because you did not have a low hormone state and yet you had a TPO and TG antibodies high, which means you have autoimmune, but it's not bad enough yet to take a hormone to overcome the low hormone state that's secondary to that Hashimoto's. But listen, there is nothing you will ever get prescribed that will help your Hashimoto's. Nothing. There's nothing that a doctor will give you that will help your Hashimoto's. So that question needs to be, a lot of you, hopefully you're, you're, you're thinking it right now. Why do I have Hashimoto's? Why do I have autoimmune in the first place? Because so many of you, it's actually multiple autoimmune. So I want you to write in this circle, Hashimoto's, lupus, MS, whatever autoimmune conditions you have, I want you to write those in there right now. And now we're going to go into the reasons why. Why in the world would your body be attacking its own tissue? We know that taking hormone replacement will never help your thyroid and it definitely will never help your autoimmune. And this is what we get with our patients every day and why they're able to lose weight, why they're able to get their life back, why they're able to feel good and have their energy. And yes, they may still need to take that thyroid hormone replacement because their autoimmune has destroyed their thyroid so much they can never produce enough. And yet they feel good. If it was all about just taking hormone replacement, each and every one of you would not be sitting here taking your valuable time watching me talk and talk about thyroid because you would be feeling good and you'd be like, I don't need to worry about that. But you don't feel good. You still don't feel good because a hormone will never fix you. I'm going to teach you what, what will fix you here. So let's get into this. And it's not about fixing Hashimoto's. I don't treat Hashimoto's. I don't treat lupus. I don't treat autoimmune conditions. I help and support the systems that are triggering the body to attack its own tissue. And that's the thought process you need to be. And that's why we say the who really, really matters. One of my favorite books ever, Who Not How. If you haven't read it, I re highly recommend it. Who Not How. The who really matters because your who right now has been your endocrinologist. And that was a dud of an appointment. You waited a month, three months, six months, and you go in and you're like, oh, thyroid doctor. And they go, let's raise your, your hormone. Let's lower your hormone. Raise your hormone. Lower your hormone. Never had any, any response. Never had any luck from that. Your neurologist, your PCP, everybody's just kind of like, eh. It, let's change your, your thyroid hormone dosage or refer you out to somebody else because we put up our hands and you ask too many questions. You, you shouldn't question me about Hashimoto's. Come on. No, you need to know what's going on in your body. Absolutely. So autoimmune, let's get into the systems that are causing and driving autoimmune. What about blood sugar? Okay, blood sugar is the number one most common thing that we work on when we're talking autoimmune. That's why I wrote my book, Blood Sugar Doesn't Lie, because it is so crucial for you guys to get your blood sugar stabilized. Write this down, 85 to 110 all day, every day. Okay, 85 to 110 all day, every day. What does that mean? If your blood sugar spikes up, 
you rev up the uh, the immune system by stimulating insulin production. You get insulin, glucose, it stimulates inflammation, and you destroy more tissue. Every time your blood sugar crashes down, you're going to rev up the adrenals. The adrenals tell the liver to release glucose. And now you've got glucose floating around, but you also have adrenaline. Every time that happens, you destroy more tissue. We have found that it's actually more problematic to go hypoglycemic with patients than it is to go hyper when we're talking about autoimmune. So many of you are concerned about, am I pre-diabetic, diabetic, insulin resistance, whatever, but it's the lows that are more of a problem. And this is why you're getting random anxiety. How many of you guys are dealing with random anxiety? I want to tell you that over 90% of you that are dealing with random anxiety, it's because of hypoglycemia, because that blood sugar is crashing down, you're dropping below 85, the adrenals kick in, they tell the liver to release glucose, you got glucose floating around, great, but you've got adrenaline floating around. So walking through the grocery store and your heart rate starts, and you're like, okay, no one's like gonna jump out and get me, but I'm freaking out. I'm sitting in class, I'm freaking out. I'm sitting at work, it's mid afternoon, I'm freaking out. Why? Random anxiety, nine times out of 10 is hypoglycemia, blood sugar going low. So we have to stabilize this blood sugar. It's absolutely crucial. That's why every single one of our patients that we work with gets three months supply of continuous glucose monitor and we dial in 100% on that blood sugar. We've got to get it figured out. Uh, number two here is going to be the adrenals. We already talked a little bit about the adrenals and every time that blood sugar crashes, the adrenals kick in. But stress, so many of you guys could put down a, you could, you could write down right now, five, four, three stressors that have stimulated your inflammation, your autoimmune, your health crisis, whatever's going on. It could be uh, death, divorce, jobs, kids, husbands, elections, it could be uh, cars breaking down, all these different things can drive the adrenals. But I'm here to tell you, the number one stressor to the adrenals is blood sugar swings, especially dips. So if you are not stabilizing your blood sugar, you are missing out on supporting your adrenals. How do you test that? You've got to test your cortisol and your DHEA. We do this in every single patient in our blood, blood work. Um, cortisol and DHEA, very specific ranges that we're looking at that. Uh, for blood sugar, we test this in every one of our patients' blood work. A couple things you have to think about. We test our blood work non-fasting. I want to see what your insulin is randomly throughout the day, non-fasting. We catch insulin resistance way more than if it was fasting. I want to see what your glucose is doing, your A1C, your triglycerides. All of these things are going to point towards is there a blood sugar issue or not. But ultimately, it doesn't matter because you're getting a continuous glucose monitor. We were the first office in the United States probably four years ago that started doing continuous glucose monitoring with every single patient that we work with. And it was primarily because of autoimmune that we started doing this. So every single patient gets a continuous glucose monitor, and now we're going to be able to start tracking uh, day by day, second by second, and seeing exactly what that blood sugar is doing. So um, adrenals. Then we get into vitamin D. So write this down, guys. If you have autoimmune, I want your vitamin D upwards of 80, okay? So don't just go and say, oh, I'm taking a little vitamin D. I'm taking 1,000 or 5,000, whatever. You have to test and retest. And if your vitamin D is not at least 80 and you've got autoimmune, you are deficient. And vitamin D modulates that immune response, turns it up at the right time and turns it down at the right time. If you do not have optimal vitamin D, your immune system cannot regulate well enough to keep your, uh, to keep your immune system in that right place and your autoimmunity at check. So vitamin D is crucial. Uh, you have to take vitamin D. A lot of our patients end up needing to take like 10,000 plus per day to get where they need to get outside, get some sun. Um, a lot of you are like, holy cow, what's he talking about? But even tanning bed three, five minutes, once or twice a week, especially in the winter in Northern latitudes, you might even need some tanning bed action there. Um, then we get into leaky gut. Leaky gut is going to be uh, where the small intestine lining is irritated and it's not absorbing nutrients like it needs to. It's getting in too early. It's creating this immune inflammatory process. Latest research shows if somebody has leaky gut, they're 30 times more likely to get autoimmunity. 
we can test you for leaky gut, $300, $400 test, but I don't anymore. I've done, remember, I've done this since uh, 1999 was my first functional medicine class I ever took in Dallas, Texas. And I sat there with some of the founders and the originators of even the coined the term functional medicine and started learning about leaky gut. And yet I don't test for it anymore because I know if you have autoimmune, if you are dealing with autoimmune, you've got leaky gut. We've got to go there. We've got to fix it. And it's a process. It takes a bunch of, of uh, kill off, rebuilding of microbiome, rehealing that gut lining, uh, replacing enzymes, all these different things. It takes time. It takes energy, but you can do it. Things like glutamine and marshmallow root and aloe vera juice, all of that is great. But if you're not fixing your microbiome, if you're not using oil of oregano and garlic and different things to kill off and then bring back in the good probiotics, you're missing out on so much. Here, here's your tip for the day with probiotics. Don't just start taking a probiotic off the bat if you have not killed off the bad stuff first. How do we know you have bad stuff? Have you been on more than three antibiotics in your life? You've got bad stuff. So you've got to get that leaky gut figured out. Then we get into uh, estrogenic events. So what are estrogenic events? Well, estrogenic events are going to be a pregnancy. How many of you guys never felt the same after a pregnancy? If that's you and you never felt the same, I guarantee it's autoimmune. There's got to be autoimmune in your body. Uh, I've found so many teenage girls that have autoimmune. It was going through puberty, really drove that Hashimoto's, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, all types of different things. It could be going on birth control pill. Birth control pill is not hormone suppression. It's actually hormone replacement. It could have been going on uh, hormone replacement, going through menopause. It could have been going through menopause. So many different things, estrogenic events can drive this. So what do you need to do? You need to make sure your liver is detoxifying hormones like it's supposed to. You need to make sure that your adrenals are working well enough because the adrenals produce testosterone ultimately and then ultimately into estrogen. And so if your adrenals are depleted, then you're going to have estrogen imbalances and going to be able to stimulate that autoimmune. Another one that we look at is environmental toxins. The average female is exposed to over uh, over 150 chemicals by the time they leave the bathroom every morning. Hair stuff, I've got four boys, so I don't know, <laughs> I don't know everything, but like the, the eyeliner things and eyelash stuff and cheek, you know, the uh, makeup stuff you put on your cheeks and all those things, every one of those has chemicals. The hair stuff, my wife told me that uh, they don't use ha hairspray anymore, that women don't use hairspray anymore. But, you know, uh, whatever people are putting in their hairs, lotions, all of these things, we're getting bombarded with chemicals all the time, off-gassing from couches and floors and carpets and paints. We're getting exposed to chemicals in our water, in our foods, all types of different things. Every one of those insults by itself isn't that big of a deal, but when you lump them together, that stimulates our immune system and can drive that autoimmunity. Um, so environmental toxins is a huge part of it. We've got to make sure your liver's detoxifying, clearing these things out. Uh, then we get into infections. So infections are going to be Epstein-Barr virus. If you have not looked into Epstein-Barr virus and mono uh, and autoimmune, do a quick Google search and you'll be shocked. NIH, uh, the, the JAMA, all these different places show Epstein-Barr virus can drive all of these different autoimmune conditions, MS and rheumatoid arthritis and lupus and uh, Hashimoto's, all of these different things can be stimulated by chronic infection. Epstein-Barr virus is one of them, but so is H. pylori, so is hepatitis, so is herpes. If you get little lip sores all the time, that's a very good indication that it's continually driving your immune system and it can attack, attack, attack. So we've got to deal with chronic infections in your body. And if you're not, then you're missing out on a huge, huge part of this. Uh, then we get into, uh, in especially when we're talking about um, when we're talking about Hashimoto's, we're getting into gluten. So, so many of you guys have heard, don't eat gluten with Hashimoto's. Maybe you've tried it, maybe you've had it, but hopefully I can inspire you 
right now. So here's what happens. Every time you eat gluten, you have the potential to rev up the immune system because uh, gluten and the thyroid look so similar. So your body will rev it up. It'll attack not only gluten, but it will also attack the thyroid. And that doesn't last for a day or a week or a month. It can be up to six months. Every time you ingest gluten, you can be driving and stimulating your autoimmune reaction in your body. So think about this. Um, infections, that's going to take a while. We got to deal with that. We got to address that. Adrenals, you got to rebuild that. Blood sugar, you got to put on that CGM, and it's going to take a while to figure out which foods make it go up and go down. Um, leaky gut, you know, that could be a, a three month process to get that to heal. But gluten, that's something right now, this next meal, you can go gluten free. It's something, if you're like, oh, I've got Hashimoto's and I feel so bad. I'm tired. It's making me fat. It's causing all these issues. I've got Hashimoto's. I'm bad, bad, bad. Guess what? If you're still eating gluten, then you've got no basis to complain because that's the one thing you can change right here, right now. If, if you're like, hey, I've got this chronic Epstein-Barr virus infection and I've tried some things and it just, I can't get it figured out. Okay, well, you know what? That's a little bit out of your power right now because you haven't found the right who. But gluten, that's something you can do right now. Look in the mirror, stop gluten. Hopefully I inspire at least one of you guys to, to stop that right now. Um, so this is, this is a partial wheel that we're looking at, but this is the thought process that you need to be having. Why is my body attacking its own tissue? No amount of levothyroxine will ever help Hashimoto's. No amount of levothyroxine will ever help your thyroid. It will give you more hormone replacement. That, that's it. It'll give you more T4 hormone. It will never help anything out. So there's no endocrinologist that will ever address autoimmune. Think about this. I, I'd hate to be an endocrinologist, one of the worst jobs out there, because you go in and you're like, I still don't feel good. Okay, we'll raise it. I still don't feel good. Lower it. I still don't feel good. And they get all day, every day. I don't feel good. I don't feel good. I don't feel good. I definitely would not want to be an endocrinologist. Um, it, it's, it's very unsatisfying. They are hormone doctors. And remember, what's Hashimoto's? It's an autoimmune disease. It's not a thyroid disease. So if we know that Hashimoto's is an autoimmune disease and they're sending you to a hormone doctor, that doesn't make sense, does it? You may need some hormones, but they're never going to help your Hashimoto's. So then you're like, well, who do I go see? Do I go see that rheumatologist that helps with lupus and Sjogren's and uh, rheumatoid arthritis? And they're an autoimmune doctor. If you go to that autoimmune doctor, go to that rheumatologist and say, I have Hashimoto's. I want you to help my Hashimoto's. They'd look at you like you're crazy. They go, I don't, I don't work with Hashimoto's. Go see your endocrinologist. And you're like, no, it's autoimmune. Help me. They won't help you. And here's why. The cure is worse than the disease. Going on prednisone, going on methotrexate, going on Humira, any of these drugs, the cure for Hashimoto's is worse than, than the disease. So they will never treat your Hashimoto's. Your endocrinologist, your rheumatologist are happy, never treating, never helping your Hashimoto's. And most of them will actually lie to you and tell you there's nothing you can do about it. But I'm here to tell you something different. And if you're not catching on yet that you need to find the right who, then that's what you have to do. Instead of going, I'm going to go back to that endocrinologist and expect a different reaction, expect something different, expect something different. No, you've got to find a different who. And that's what we do at F8. We help you get to these underlying root causes, figure out which systems are out of balance, fix those systems. I don't, I don't heal Hashimoto's. I don't treat cancer. I don't treat uh, Graves disease or Crohn's disease. I treat underlying imbalances. I help you learn how to live in a way that decreases this immune inflammatory process to the point where your body can stop attacking its own tissue. And then from there, it can start thinking about actually healing. And that's what we want to see. If you guys want answers, I have a huge special going on right now for each and every one of you that watch this webinar. Normally, our blood work, our exam, report findings, metabolic assessment, everything is $549. We've got it for $349. You can click the link down below and you can get the blood work. This blood work is $3,000. How do we know that? Because we've had patients over the years that they say, oh, I've met my deductible. I'll just go into the lab and get it done. Well, guess what? They had it and they get a bill from the hospital for $3,000 and they have to pay it. 
Uh, we have cash prices set up through LabCorp. If you don't know if you have a LabCorp close to you, Google LabCorp near me. And I guarantee 99% of you will have one within an hour. And if you don't, we have other ways to get you blood work, even if you're out in the middle of nowhere. We'll send you to LabCorp. You'll get that blood work done. We'll send you paper. This metabolic assessment is going to be take you an hour and a half, two hours. And it's questions like, do you get dizzy when you stand up? Do you have a hard time staying asleep, getting to sleep? All of these different questions that point towards these systems as well. So we're matching up your, your symptoms. We're matching that to what we're seeing in the blood work. And then we're coming up with what systems are out of balance. And these are the phases of care that you need to go through. And the who is going to take you by the hand. That's us. It's going to take you by the hand and we're going to walk you through system by system by system, phase by phase, and start reversing these underlying whys and get you to that point where your body stops attacking its own tissue. That, that's my number one goal. I don't know if you'll ever be able to get off thyroid medication. I don't know if your antibodies will ever go away, but I want you to stop attacking your tissue. I want you as little inflammation, immune response as possible. How do you do that? You fix the things that are driving it in the first place. So uh, I would love to see you guys join the ranks of the people that we have helped over, over our years. My F8 team, we have over 50 years of experience in functional medicine. Uh, I've got metabolic coordinators that take you by the hand and point out why that blood sugar goes up, why it goes down. And we uh, do detoxification, supplementation, dietary changes. You come out knowing exactly what to do, when to do it, how to do this long-term. Your weight's better, your inflammation's better. I guarantee you in the first 30 days, you are going to be feeling a noticeable difference if you do every single thing that we recommend. If you do it to a T, follow the program, jump in, give it your all, you can get your life back. This isn't for somebody that just, uh, I don't really want to change my diet. This isn't for somebody that's like, you know what, um, I've already taken a couple supplements before. I, I really don't want to take anything. This isn't a supplement program. We use supplements to help these systems, but there's no amount of supplements that's going to fix you. It's about you, it's about your blood sugar, it's about your diet, it's about your inflammation, it's about your thought processes and your sleep and all these different things, day in and day out, can we help you get your life back? And the answer is yes. The way we're gonna know that is to run that blood work, run that metabolic assessment, do the exam, report of findings, let you know exactly what's going on. And myself or one of my team will hold your hand through this process and help you get your life back. I hope you guys have learned a bunch today. If you've got more questions, reach out, social media, e email, any way, get a hold of us, and would love to answer those questions. If you want to take advantage of the new patient special that we have going on right now, uh, 349, click that link down below, and then one of my team will contact you within 24 hours. They'll get you set up for that blood work, get you set up for all your appointments, and you will get your life back. If you put the time, put the energy in, have the support, want to jump in and change your life trajectory. That's what we're here for, guys. Let's get this going.